Today we're going to be taking a default .NET 5 Web API project and getting this up and running on AWS Elastic Beanstalk using AWS Code Pipeline, Code Build, Elastic Beanstalk itself and adding some files to the default Web API project to get this working. So to start with we've just got the default .NET 5 Web API project. The only thing which we've got different is that we've got a build set file and a proc file which we'll cover later on but if we run this this should look pretty familiar if you've ever used the default project. We've got a nice little API um, returning some weather forecast information. Let's get this though up and running on Elastic Beanstalk. We want to come across to AWS and we're going to set up a code pipeline for this. So search on the top code pipeline. Once you're on this page we want to go to create pipeline and you want to give your pipeline a name. In this instance I'm going to call this AWS pipeline demo video but we can call it whatever you want. We're going to create a new service role for this and we're not going to change anything in the advanced setting so we're going to click next. For the source provider this depends where you're actually hosting your repo so in my case I'm hosting it in GitHub but you might have it coming from S3 or you might use Bitbucket for example or alternatively you might use code commit which I will cover in a future video but in this situation I'm going to, I'm going to click GitHub. This is going to go across and if you've never used this before you're going to have to connect to GitHub but in this case I already have an existing connection so I'm going to use this. And then we're going to pick one of the repositories which in this case is the AWS pipeline demo and I'm going to choose the main branch. Depending on how your repo is set up this might not be main for you but in most situations it is. With this option we can choose every time that we merge something into main or commit to main it will automatically start the pipeline which downstream effect will have that it will deploy to our Elastic Beanstalk um, instance. So it is up to you whether or not you want this enabled but you probably do so we're going to keep this enabled and then we're going to keep the output artifact format the exact same. Clicking next we're going to choose what the build provider is in this case I'm going to use AWS code build. Next we need to go across and press this create project button and create something in AWS code build which will pop up a window and we can create a build project. So in this situation I'm going to call it AWS pipeline demo video. I'm not going to change the description. I'm not going to restrict anything. Coming down here for the operating system I'm going to use Ubuntu and for the runtime we're going to use standard and standard 5. So what this part is referring to is we need to build a YAML formatted build spec file which code build can take in and then build our project for us. So this file which we have here is one of the two files we've added to this default project and what this is doing is saying we have a .NET 5 project and then we're going to restore the project, we're then going to build it and then we're going to bundle it up and publish it. Now YAML is very tedious with spaces and tabs and getting it in the right format can be a little bit hard and you'll probably get errors the first time if you try to write this from hand. So I'd recommend going across to the GitHub repo which is in the description and actually just copying and pasting this and then changing it for what you need. So to demo how you'd want to set up this if into the file system we'll be able to see the structure of this. So we're currently sitting here in the build spec. We want to go find the project which is in this AWS pipeline demo and is here. So we can use that path in the build spec file here, here and here and that's what you want to change to update this to what your csproj location is within your own project. Now once you've got this set up and committed it we can jump back across into code build and click use a build spec file. From here we can move on and continue to code pipeline. So that is brought across our project name which we just created in code build. So we can go across and now go to the next stage. So now we want to choose where we're going to deploy this. So we have quite a few options here but in this situation I'm going to use Elastic Beanstalk for this demonstration. But you can go through any of these and choose to deploy to that. So let's click AWS Elastic Beanstalk. You can change the region to any of the ones they've got listed but in this situation I'm going to keep it on US East. Now if you don't currently have an Elastic Beanstalk application we need to go across and create one in the AWS Beanstalk console. So I have it already favorited but if you don't you want to just search Elastic Beanstalk and let's open this in a new tab. So once you're here let's click create a new environment. In this situation we're setting up a web API so we're going to click web server environment and then select that. We're then going to give this a nice name which will get auto populated here and we're just going to leave this auto generated. Next we're going to choose the platform 
In this case, I'm going to host this .NET application on Linux. And this will pre-populate these, but they're essentially what you already want, which is the up-to-date platform version for Amazon Linux 2. Next, we're just going to use the example application which Elastic Beanstalk gives us, and we're going to create an environment. Now, this is going to take anywhere from two to three minutes to set up the environment for you, but it will let you know when it's done. So I'm going to fast forward to this now so you don't have to wait for a few minutes, and we'll get this environment set up. Awesome, so now that I've reloaded this page, we can see that the health is okay and we have our own little Elastic Beanstalk environment. So let's click this and we can actually see what's on it, which is congratulations, you have your first Elastic Beanstalk environment. So let's go back into our code pipeline and choose an application name. You may need to go previous and then back into the deploy stage to be able to see this. So I'm gonna click AWS Pipeline Demo Video choose the environment name which is already attached to this and then click next. So let's have a look at what we've done. So we've created a pipeline where we're going to go and get the code. We're then going to build it using AWS code build and then we're going to deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. So let's create this pipeline. So once we've created it, this is going to go off and run itself for the first time. So currently what it's just done is it's gone and grabbed it from GitHub. Now it's going to kick off a build Sweet, and that is now built, so now it's going to deploy it to our Elastic Beanstalk instance. And great, that's now deployed and it's on our Elastic Beanstalk instance. So let's go back across to that and take a look. Let's reload this. So initially this is going to 404 because the demo application which I've got in the GitHub repo has nothing on the actual route. But I did expose Swagger for production, so we can go across and use the Swagger UI to ping um, the weather forecast API, which is working. So we've now managed to get an application to go through code pipeline, code build, and onto an Elastic Beanstalk environment. One of those files we covered at the start, though, we haven't actually gone across yet, and that is this proc file. This proc file helps point Elastic Beanstalk to what application it should actually be running. Typically, the DLL, which you'll be wanting to name it to, if you go into the properties for your project will be the assembly name .dll. But if you ever do want to know, you can essentially just run this, which will spit out all the files which it's going to give to Elastic Beanstalk anyway. And then you'll be able to go in and see what the DLL is, which you want to point Elastic Beanstalk to run. So if you follow the steps of this video, you've hopefully got your application running now on Elastic Beanstalk instance on AWS. I would highly recommend going across to the link in the description so you can view the repo, especially for the build spec and prop file and any other things which you might want to see in the default application.